architecture today in an age of cybernetics and virtual reality, uh, I think often we're discovering ourselves as makers being distanced from the very things that we make, the processes of, from which they're derived. Getting to know how to craft something um, is just as important as crafting the actual object. You learn a lot of lessons from learning the tools and, and using the tools, and you learn what you can't do and, and what maybe you didn't think you could do, but now you can. I think their work with the Froebel sets is tactile, it's visceral, it's through the skin. It engages their intellect and in their mind's eye, but it also, in the construction of the sets, the respect for the material, engages their hands and their bodies. A lot of the times we, we made two different boxes, and we made one simple one, and I always say it's the simple one because of the way the finger joints uh, fit into each other, but at the end of the day, when we finish the simple and complex one, the complex one is nice to look at, and you feel it, and it has a nice quality to the edges, but it doesn't feel right in your hands. Uh, and in our simple one, we, we curved out a little divot in the lid, and we smoothed that down, and you could sit there, I could sit there for hours, and just play with that little little dimple in the wood. And it's the smallest, smallest little thing we could have done to it. And I think it, it gives me the most satisfaction using it. And I think that's the kind of mission that you have when you're working with visceral. Being physically involved in something, touching something, you just get more of an experience out of it. I also learn very well like visually. Our professor John would give us a prompt and we would have 30 seconds to a minute to take our blocks and arrange them in such a way that it would describe the prompt that he provided to us. Some were just kind of feelings and then some were architectural concepts and principles starting from things like hierarchy and repetition, syncopation, taking those and moving on to like sorrow and anger. When John throws out those words, those emotions, those ordering principles, uh, and with the limited time, you don't really have time to, you know, think about this and, and consider all of the different aspects. You kind of just react and, and work with these uh, visceral materials that you've come to know. At first, we had no idea how we were about to demonstrate a bunch of different design concepts with eight identical pieces of wood. I think it was 30 seconds to a minute to take this kind of prompt and figure out something between the three of us that we were happy with. Initially, when they begin the exercises, uh, when they're given a prompt, their left brain takes over and they begin to think about how is it that I can abstractly and symbolically describe a thing. However, however, you know, over 20 or 30 minutes, that begins to change. And the students begin to see things for what they are. You know, it start up being obvious. Uh, and you'd make a shape that was very, kind of just showed what the word was, like if, you know, sad, it was a sad face, you know, things like that. And then you kind of had to look at that and you were like, that's not really what this is about. And you would take, you would, you know, mess up the blocks again and you would go at it again to try and figure out how you could use these, these blocks to convey something that's kind of out of our reach in a physical way. The Froebel sets help them to recognize by looking and they're looking in a new way. And so within moments, you know, I might ask them to use the sets to describe a, a quality of light on a surface in this house. And all of a sudden they look at an encaustic wall, they look at the grain of quarter sawn oak and they begin to look at those relationships and then the sets take on a new meaning. It was amazing how many different variations you could get with just a limited amount of material. It creates kind of a reactionary design uh, that you then get to sit back and look at and consider and look at its strengths and maybe its weaknesses. And for the next exercise, you delve deeper into those. It was just interesting how just within these very dimensionalized blocks, everything looks the same. You can, you're able to make such drastic differences in appearance. It really made you think abstractly I'm also a very concrete thinker at times, to sort of be given this, an emotion that you have to convey in GIFs at five, which is cubes, it pushes you to think outside of the box, really sort of try and find like the sole core of this emotion. 
quite a few times I thought, what did I get myself into? Um, but looking back at it all now, I think it really helped a lot. <laughs> It unlocks doors that have been previously closed, and it's one wonderful way for them to transverse hemispheres, to go from the right to the left, in a powerful and compelling and liberating way for young people, and also to discover themselves as potential artists and makers. It was really amazing looking back at the pictures, how many we were able to create, and how many like strong compositions we could make just with eight bricks. Given the elements that you have, you should be able to, to take those and push them to your advantage. And I think that's a lot of what architecture is. It's taking these kind of site physics that you're kind of stuck with. You don't really have a choice of whether or not the sun is a, you know, the way the sun passes or the way the wind blows. And you take these physics and you use them to your advantage. The sets are allowing us to make sense out of complexity which is unique, and I think the students are experiencing it in their own work and in their own way. I used the blocks this summer. I had an internship uh, in the city of Toledo with city planning. I mean, if you look at it downtown and plan, you see modulation and similar kind of aspects, and we were reorganizing streets and things uh, to make them more pedestrian-like, and I found myself using the blocks to kind of describe to my coworkers what I think the streets should be to accommodate pedestrians. In the studio, there might be uh, their neighbors in the graduate studio looking at them saying, you know, what are you guys doing? You know, why are you playing with blocks? You're, you're big kids, you know, why, why are you playing with blocks? And the students' answers are always so lovely, and I'll use the word lovely, because they talk about, well, we're looking at the world in a new way.